everyone welcome back to my channel for today's video we have another empties video i believe the last time i did one of these was in march so this is now three months worth of empties i think i'm going to do what i did last time and i'm actually going to do a separate video of my sheet mask empties because having got them together there are quite a few of them to go through because otherwise this video will be longer than it's already bound to be because empties videos are never short so for this one we're just going to go through the items in my basket here and then the next video will be my sheet mask empties there will probably be some overlap in this video from items that you may have previously seen before that i've emptied because especially now that i'm doing the shop my stash skincare drawer there are items in there that i am finishing up and I am giving my kind of review on them as I do in this video. So apologies if you have watched those videos and I am kind of going over old ground with things. But I still like to do my empties videos and not everyone watches every video. So starting with one that will have featured in Shop My Stash. This is the Sanctuary Spa Foaming Micellar Cleanser Water. So I can't remember where I actually got this product from. I don't know if it's maybe part of a gift set or something that I got or in a subscription box but it wasn't too bad of a product and it's probably one of the best foaming micella waters that i've tried i tend to find that the foam on them can be a little bit lackluster whereas this one did give up a decent amount of foam and it didn't disperse too quickly so i found that it was quite effective when applying it to my face i could feel the foam still being there and kind of lifting the dirt and stuff off my face so this one was pretty effective for the price that Sanctuary Spa is at, I don't know if I'd necessarily rush out to repurchase it. I don't feel like I gained an awful lot from a foam foaming. Yes, okay, I said I could feel it, but I felt like it still took the makeup off as effective as one that's a fraction of the price. So it is one that I would happily use again if it crossed my lap, but it's not one that I would rush out to repurchase. But if you are a fan of Sanctuary Spa products and this is possibly one you haven't tried, it might be worth trying in that respect. Next we have a product from Nip and Fab. This is the No Needle Fix Serum. I think this is the product that I finished up in my most recent Shop My Stash video. So again, apologies the review on this is kind of fresh. This is a serum that I had opened for the longest time. I did actually feature this in a video of the skincare that appears to be never ending because I had it open and was constantly using it and just couldn't seem to get it down. I believe when I first purchased this, I got it on the Nip and Fab website direct and they did used to always have £5 deals where they had a handful of products that were £5 for a limited amount of time. The last few times I've checked on the website, they now seem to have £10 fines. So I don't know if the £5 is only every so often that they do it and it's £10 more regularly. I think this product retails for either 15 or 20 pounds i don't know if i'd necessarily pay that but i think if i've possibly seen it pop up on the five pounds or maybe even the 10 pound fines i would possibly pick it up again because it is a really nice serum it is nice and lightweight and it does leave your skin feeling nice and fresh afterwards it soaks into the skin really quickly and i did notice some slight plumping effects with it if i'm honest i do think towards the end my skin did get kind of used to it so I think it would be a product that I possibly would hold off on picking up for a while, unless it obviously did come on sale, but I was using it for a long time, so that's kind of no surprise, but a pretty good product and one I would look at in the future. Next we have this body wash infused buffer, and I think the brand is either Spongel or Spongelly. And this is something that I got in the winter edit of the FabFit Fun Box that I got towards the beginning of the year. And this has definitely been my favourite product from that FabFit Fun Box. This is, as it says, a body wash infused buffer. So it is like a flower shaped sponge and it does have the product contained in it. So as soon as you soak it underwater and start buffing it into your skin, it does lather up nicely. This is in the scent Sugar Dahlia and it smells absolutely amazing. And if I'm honest, I was a little sad once I'd finished this one up. It says that it cleanses, exfoliates, hydrates and massages. And I feel like it did all that. I didn't use it every time I got a shower. I did try and kind of limit myself to once or twice a week with this one. And I remember it saying in the booklet, so I don't think it says here, that I think it said it was about 15 uses. And I would definitely agree with that. The way the product kind of finishes up is kind of odd. I thought it would be a case like a sort of bar of soap and that the sponge would shrink, but it's just, it stops lathering up basically. And as I was getting towards the end, it was lathering up less and less. So effectively, I've still got quite a nice smelling sponge, but it was a really nice product and, and I did really enjoy using it. I don't know if I'd necessarily repurchase it because I don't think these are cheap and I actually don't know if these are available here at all. 
this might be something that I might kind of treat myself to around the holiday time maybe but another one I wouldn't kind of rush out and purchase straight away next we have this Nivea in shower moisturizer and I think this is a product that's probably featured in every empties video that I've ever done this is my kind of holy grail moisturizer I am really lazy when it comes to moisturizing my body and I haven't got the patience to kind of moisturize myself after the shower and let it soak in and things whereas this is as it states you put it on in the shower and you pretty much wash it straight off and your skin does feel nice and soft I have found these a bit kind of harder to come by as of late so I don't know if it's something that they're discontinuing maybe they weren't popular but for a lazy person like me they were kind of ideal and because I have kind of gone towards a more moisturizing shower gel I have found myself not needing to reach for it as much so I think the next one that I'm going to go into will probably take me a little while to use is a great moisturizer and say if you are kind of lazy or anything when it comes to moisturizing I would highly recommend this I then have a couple of bottles of shampoo that I've finished these are the same shampoo it is the Avon advanced techniques beautifully nourished with Moroccan argan oil and I've obviously gone through two of these in the past three months because this is my go-to shampoo I do think because I have been using it for quite a while now that my hair has gotten used to it so now that I finished up this last one literally last week I've now gone into a I think it's a Garnier ultimate blend shampoo to give that one a go on the first wash of using that one my hair did feel softer than when I used this but again I think it's because my hair is used to this but generally Moroccan argan oil does tend to agree with my hair and really help tame the frizz. I don't tend to like to spend a lot of money on shampoo and I think I can usually get two of these for £5. But I do also use the conditioner of this which as is always the case I think I've still got about half of my conditioner left there for the time it took me to use these two shampoo bottles. But it is a really nice shampoo and it does leave my hair nice and soft and it does tame the frizz slightly. I say I'm just taking a break from it for a little while to use the other one but I do have one if not two more of these in backup to go into because it is a great shampoo. Another shampoo that I finished up is this Aussie Miracle Moist shampoo and I actually stopped using this one when I found this shampoo. This one is just okay. It says it's got macadamia nut oil in and it is supposed to infuse moisture into parched hair. It doesn't necessarily say that it's a frizz fighter but I tend to find that shampoos for dry hair do tend to help fight the frizz. I did think this would help, but it just didn't do anything for me at all. But I've used it in the past few months because, to be honest, I've not been wearing my hair down an awful lot. So I did want to use it up and not waste it because it still cleaned my hair. It just meant I had to work harder to straighten it. So because I've not been overly straightening it with being home a lot and I've just had it tied back a lot of the time, thought it was a perfect opportunity to finish this one up but yeah this isn't one that I can recommend. Next is these deep cleansing facial wipes and these are just the Home and Bargain own brand ones. I pretty much predominantly use these to clean up any makeup or swatches or anything like that that I get because on my face they aren't the best. So these wipes are always on a two for one pound offer so they are 50 pence a packet so for 50 pence I wasn't expecting much anyway to be honest. I have had some of their wipes in the past and they've been okay but I think these are probably the worst ones I've tried. These do really sting my eyes. If I was in a bit of a pinch I would take foundation and stuff off with them because they do remove it but my skin feels quite tight and things afterwards. I wouldn't recommend these. Speaking of makeup remover we have this Rimmel eye makeup remover and I think this is actually a product that I found at the back of my drawer when I sorted out my backup drawer a few months ago. So just stuck it in my empties basket because it obviously is and I have one of these which I'm currently working my way through and I'm more than halfway through at this point so this has been at the back of the drawer for the longest time. Before I found the Clinique Take the Day Off eye makeup remover, this was my kind of holy grail eye makeup remover but now since finding the Clinique one and that is so less harsh on my eyelids I've been using the other one of these that I have to kind of fix any mistakes and sort of dip a cotton wood in the end and correct anything and stuff like that I don't use it to take off my whole eye makeup so I will eventually go through that one but it's not one I would purchase again in the future next we have the elf daily facial cleanser and this is my go-to face wash I've gone through numerous ones of these this is a great facial cleanser and I've tried numerous different ones from sample services and subscription boxes 
over the past few months and none of them kind of compare to this. The only one that's come close is this one from V, which I'll talk about next. But this retails for, I think it's £5, but it does regularly go on sale when they have their 50% off sales. And it is just a, such a nice gentle face wash. It is a kind of milky gel consistency and a little does go a long way and it does lather up nicely. And most of the time I will remove my makeup first and then wash my face with this. But there's been a few times in the past where I've just been too lazy to remove the makeup first and I've just washed it off with this completely and it does work really well at that. It doesn't leave my skin feeling tight or dry or anything like that. It is really nice and gentle and it does feel moisturising so I will continue to repurchase this one. And then this one from CeraVe is a hydrating cleanser. This was a sample from Feel Unique and I did quite like this facial cleanser. I think price wise it is slightly more pricey than the e.l.f. one but formula wise they are quite similar in that they are the sort of milky gel consistency and they're really lightweight so I think if this one from e.l.f. did ever get discontinued I would definitely purchase this one from CeraVe but for the meantime I am more than happy using my e.l.f. one but this is a really good alternative. Next we have this deodorant from Nivea this is the Pearl and Beauty Quick Dry 48 hour protection and it's an antiperspirant. I have been using this deodorant for, I may even be coming up to a decade at this point. I have purchased other deodorants in the past when I've been in a pinch, say if this one hasn't been in stock and I've run really low or something, but I always come back to this deodorant. I just really love the smell of it and I feel like it is a really good antiperspirant. I will continue to purchase this deodorant and I'm not looking for another one to be honest so happy to keep using this and it's reasonably priced as well. Next we have these bath melts from Zoella Beauty. These are moisturising solid bath oil melts enriched with shea butter extract. These are something that I think are from a holiday collection probably about two years ago at this point and I picked these up probably about a year ago when they were on sale and I think I paid 50p for this pack of two. Up until recently I hadn't got a bath for the longest time so these had kind of just sat in the back of the cupboard and not been used but since lockdown and everything I've been getting baths more regularly now every sort of few weeks and they are really nice. Kind of wish I'd now tried them at the point that they were out because I would like to repurchase them but the Zoella Beauty line is completely discontinued now and I've had a look online and you just can't get anything from it so I definitely wouldn't be able to get these. When I got out the bath, my skin felt the softest it's felt in years, if I'm honest, even with using moisturisers and things like that. And I felt like my skin stayed soft for a good few days afterwards, even with me getting showers and things and basically washing this product off, my skin still felt extra soft for the next few days. So I am a bit gutted that I can't get these. If anyone knows of anything very similar to this, please let me know in the comments below because I would definitely be interested in that because these were great and the fact I got them for 50p is a bonus. I do have another bath empty actually, which I've just remembered I put in the bin rather than put it in here. And that is one of the bath bombs from I Heart Revolution. I believe they were featured in last month's haul because I did pick a couple up from Superdrug. The one that I tried was the cherry blossom one. One that I tried I think was the cherry blossom one and it did smell really nice and I did just think it was going to be a scented thing. I didn't think it would have any moisturising or anything like that in it but again when I came out of the bath my skin did feel soft. I did kind of film a little clip of it melting in the bath so if I can find that I will put that up here just so you can kind of see the colours of it because it was really pretty as bath bombs are. And I do actually have a few more there to try. But after enjoying that cherry blossom one, they were still on the three for two offer that I'd originally got. So I did actually pick up three more scents in them. I'm probably going to forget to feature them in this month's haul. But I'm mentioning them now that I did buy those this month. Next, we have these Nip and Fab Glycolic Fix Daily Cleansing Pads. This was just a sample of five of these and these were okay. I've tried the dupe version of these that was available in Aldi I think sometime last year and I kind of found these just as effective. I actually tried the Aldi ones before I tried these and there's much of a muchness in them to be honest so 
I think these retail for about £5.99 for the medium size pack whereas the ones in Aldi were £2.49 they were pretty good but much more much as compared to the nip and fab ones but yeah these are just okay then i finished up this moisturizer from wonder beauty this is the dive in moisturizer this is another product that i feel like i had open forever i was using this quite a few times a week and it just seemed never ending but it's a pretty nice moisturizer it's nice and lightweight which i've now come to realize is my preference i'm not a fan of overly thick and heavy creams so this was a really nice moisturizer one i would potentially think about purchasing in the future but i do have so much skincare on the go at the moment it's definitely not something i need now but it is what i would think about in the future so I'm glad that i tried this and i believe i got this in a tribe beauty box next i actually finished up a perfume this is the hugo boss the scent generally i am a huge fan of hugo boss perfumes my go-to perfume used to be hugo boss orange I do like the kind of fruity but not too fruity, sweet but not too sweet with a bit of hint of floral type perfumes. That probably doesn't even describe any perfume out there. But I don't like perfumes that are too heavy. I'm not a big fan of kind of musky type perfumes. I don't like ones that are overly sweet or overly floral. So the Boss Orange one is slightly sweeter than this one but still in the realms of what I like. This one is just so nice i can't actually describe what the scent is i'm not very good with the undertones or whatever it is and all that so it's just a nice perfume and i did actually ask my husband to purchase me one for christmas so i do have another one of these to go into once i start wearing perfume again though so i definitely love this perfume and it kind of makes me miss wearing perfume just smelling it here and we have a nail varnish this is the nails ink caviar base coat i think i got this as part of a set that was on offer on nails ink once and it is a pretty good base coat before actually getting this in that set i was never bothered with applying base coat i would always apply obviously my color and then more often than not i would apply a top coat but base coat was always a step that i skipped but after trying this one it's made me realize it's kind of as important as top coat really and i definitely felt that this helped with the longevity of my nail varnish this is one i would definitely consider repurchasing in the future the one that i'm currently using is a two-in-one top and base coat from essie and the reason why i purchased that one is so that i just have two bottles of nail varnish that i need to use instead of the base the nail varnish and the top coat so it's just kind of ease but yeah this is one i would recommend and would potentially purchase in the future then we have this empty tube which did contain some elizabeth arden capsules I've completely forgotten which capsules it contained. I think it was just the normal ones. I think there are pink and grey ones in the range, but this was the gold ones, which I think are just the normal ones. And these are something that I got in the Feel Unique samples, and I did really enjoy these. I have gone to purchase these on a couple of occasions, but they are quite pricey. I think a pack of 30 is about £38, which it's not much more than a pound a capsule and from using these i did make the realization that i could actually get two uses out of each capsule i don't like applying too much product for each step in my skincare and i found if i applied a whole capsule it was just a little bit too much whereas half was just quite enough so that's how i ended up getting basically 14 uses because this was a seven day sample so it is definitely something i would look at in the future because i did really enjoy them and I might use it to kind of treat myself maybe around my birthday or Christmas or something but yeah I did enjoy these and I would recommend them. Next we have this concealer from Barry M. This is the Flawless Light Reflecting Concealer and I actually found this in the back of a drawer. I thought this had long gone been put in the bin but obviously not. This used to be my favourite all-time concealer. You can see from the tube I think I've literally scraped every last inch of product out of this i do believe this has now unfortunately been discontinued hence the reason why i've scraped every last drop out of it but i did used to absolutely love this concealer and one of the reasons why i loved it was because of the applicator it has a brush applicator as opposed to your typical doe foot and because i predominantly use this type of concealer on blemishes i found that the brush was better at it not kind of caking up on blemishes whereas sometimes 
using the doe foot you kind of end up putting too much product on so i absolutely love this concealer if anyone knows of any concealers that have that same brush applicator let me know in the comments below because i would be keen to give that a try then we have a mascara from essence this is the volume stylist 18 hour lash extension mascara with lengthening fibers the longest name ever this i would say is one of my favorite ever mascaras the only problem is it does dry out quite quickly it is definitely more of a drier formula than your typical mascara and i think that is why it dries out so quickly so i find myself never getting much more than three months out of a tube of this i tend to like to stick to the six month mark for mascaras rather than three yeah this one never goes much further than three months it is a great mascara and it does give you that length i did worry about possibly getting flakes of the mascara on my cheeks with it having fibers in it but i never had the issue with it and it does last all day as well so i would highly recommend this and no doubt it is one i will pick up again in the future couple more mascaras to mention first is this one from Givenchy and this is the De Serbia mascara this is one that I got as a sample from the Glamour Beauty Club and it was an okay mascara it was nice to try a kind of bougie mascara from Givenchy but it's not one I would repurchase the thing with this one was the wand on it which I wouldn't be able to do it justice because of the product on it but it is kind of shaped like when it's got no product on it like a sort of cage so it's got loads of holes in it for the product to go into and sometimes that can mean that you end up with too much product on the brush so a few times i was having to kind of wipe it off to get an even application i think it's supposed to give you an even application with that brush but i found that that wasn't always the case i don't know if it would be a different story with the full size where you're pulling the product up a longer tube than this one but it was just an okay mascara it did lengthen my lashes, it didn't give me much volume and it gave me a bit of a kale. So yeah, not one I would repurchase but I'm glad to have tried it. And then we have this one from Tarte. This is the Light Camera Lashes Mascara. This is a mascara that I do always seem to end up with samples of because I do quite like a lot of Tarte mini sets and usually this is included. The first time I tried this mascara I wasn't impressed but because I've now tried it that many times it has kind of grown on me. It's definitely not a mascara that I would go out and purchase full price, but it's one that I will happily use because I have so many of them. I've probably got about two or three in back up there from other sets. So it's a mascara that I would say it does the job. Another Tarte product is this mini Tarte Micellar Water. I think I got this as a point perk with a purchase and I had been intrigued to try it. So it was enough of a product for me to give it a decent go. This was just an okay Micellar Water. Again, definitely not something I would purchase the full size of, but if I did get another one of these as a point perk, I'd happily use it. I don't tend to spend much more than drugstore prices on micellar water, so I wouldn't purchase the full size of this, which is at least £15, if not sort of £17. Better than other micellar waters I've tried, but not enough that I feel like I could justify the price. Then what we have left here appear to be pretty much samples that I've probably gotten fairly unique. The first one is this CeraVe Moisturising Cream and this is a moisturiser that I love. I have since gone on to purchase the full size of this. It is a great kind of no frills moisturiser. It's not scented and it's not overly heavy and it does blend into the skin really nicely so I would highly recommend this. I think this is probably a moisturiser that I'm always going to have as a staple in my skincare collection because it's great on the days where I just want a moisturiser with nothing else, just something to moisturise dry skin so I would highly recommend this. Then we have this Micella Cleansing Milk from Clarins. This was an okay product. I've tried other cleansing milks that I much prefer to this. It did have a quite floral scent to it, which I wasn't a massive fan of, but it wasn't too obnoxious, so I could get past it. This is another product, kind of like the Tarte one, where I wouldn't justify paying the full price of it because this is probably £15, £20, but it was nice to use it and it wasn't overly harsh on my skin but yeah not one i'll repurchase then we have this new face fix line smoothing serum this was just an okay serum this was three mil and i did get quite a few uses out of this but i didn't really notice it doing anything to my skin so this is definitely one that i wouldn't repurchase then we have this origins checks and balances frothy face wash I don't know if I got this in the for unique samples or not it was just something that was in my collection and I finally used it for the first time last month it's safe to say that I hated this product I wrote a note to myself on the back saying toothpaste 
because that is exactly what it was like and when you mix it with the water it does feel like you're basically just washing your face with warm toothpaste and the scent of the toothpaste I know it's not toothpaste but the scent of the kind of mint doesn't leave your face I think I had to wash my face a good two or three times after using this face wash just to get rid of the minty scent because it wasn't a nice minty scent so yeah this was not a good product at all then we have this Clinique Fresh Pressed Renewing Powder Cleanser. This was quite an interesting concept. I uh, just poured the powder into my hand, added water, and it turned into a face wash. So this one was quite cool to use. It was quite a nice face wash. It did have a sort of vitamin C, sort of orangey scent to it, and it was quite nice to use, and it did feel refreshing. Don't know if it was something that I would necessarily run out to purchase because I feel like it's slightly gimmicky, but it was nice to use it while I had it. Then we have this little Glam Glow Moisture Trip Moisturiser. I did really enjoy this product. Glam Glow is quite a pricey brand, so I don't know if this is something I'd necessarily run out to purchase, but if it did ever notice it on sale with a decent discount, it would be definitely something I would consider purchasing because this is a nice lightweight moisturiser, which as I have realised is what I kind of tend to like. A little does go a long way and it does leave your skin feeling nice and moisturised and even the next day I feel like I've still got that kind of moisture locked into my skin so I would highly recommend this but this is another product that would be a kind of treat myself. And then finally inadvertently I have three products from Sol de Janeiro. First of all I have a sample of the Brazilian Boom Boom Cream which is the original one. I think I've effectively squeezed every last drop out of here I really like this moisturiser. I think it's probably the scent that I'm more in love with than the actual moisturiser because the scent of the original is absolutely amazing and I just love smelling it on myself so this is a product that I love. I did go on after trying this and smelling it to purchase a travel set of a few minis and I think in that was a small tub of this cream. I haven't yet broken into that one yet but it is one that I will definitely be using because I say I just love kind of smelling of this so I have gone on to repurchase this one and I absolutely love it. On the other hand we have the Coco Cabana cream. This is one that I did not love the scent of and this is still pretty much full because I used this once and and didn't use it again. I think I ended up trying to wash off the scent of this one and then putting some of this on my legs just to get rid of the scent of this. I'm putting it a bit too close to my nose there. Effectiveness of the cream, it was nice and soft and felt very similar to the original one. I think this one's supposed to be slightly more hydrating than the original one, but I just, I could not get over the scent. I, I did not like it at all. was not a fan of this one. And then the final product is the Brazilian Bod Buff. This is another product that I have squeezed every last drop out of this tube. I did really, really enjoy this product and it is definitely one I would consider purchasing in the future. I do have a few other body exfoliators in my collection that I want to use up first before using this one. But yeah, I will definitely be purchasing this in the future. If not the new one that they've just announced. They have released a new body scrub which looks like it comes in the same tub as the Boom Boom Cream. So I would be tempted to look at the price of that first and compare it to this one because I don't know what the differences are, but I would compare the two and then make a decision. But yeah, definitely one I will consider purchasing in the future. It is a really nice exfoliator as well as smelling amazing. The beads in it are just the right size that you do feel like you're decently exfoliating your legs without kind of scratching them up like some exfoliators can feel like. And my legs feel nice and soft afterwards and again, smell amazing. So this is one I would highly recommend. So all the products are now gone and my basket is empty again few hits and misses over the past few months definitely some products that I would consider purchasing in the future but that is it for today's video if you did enjoy it please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not already thanks